This is section 3.8, Derivatives of Logarithmic Functions, Content Objective 2, which is to perform logarithmic differentiation. When we're done, I'd like you to be able to answer the question, does a function have to be in the n to the n form in order for logarithmic differentiation to work? If so, or if not, I'd like you to justify your answer in words. By the time we've finished chapter 3, I want you to be able to take the derivative of anything that I give you. So that's anything that's polynomial or trig or inverse trig or logarithmic or exponential or any product, quotient, sum, difference or composition of those types of functions. And we have already gotten all of the tools to do that. We can differentiate everything that I could throw at you except for one family of functions. And that family of functions are those of the form n to the n. If we look at n to the n, we have a variable in the base and a variable in the power. So that means I can't use the power rule, which is only appropriate for variables raised to numbers, nor can I use the exponential rule, which is numbers raised to variables. So do we throw in the towel and give up? Of course not. We've got one final tool called logarithmic differentiation that will enable us to tackle every single function that we get. So our steps are to take the natural log of both sides and then use properties of logs to rewrite as sums and or products of easier logs. The reason we do this is with step two we're able to separate the exponent from the base. So we're able to pull it down in front and create a product as opposed to a, a variable raised to a variable. Once we've done that, then we can use implicit differentiation to find dy dx, and then we can isolate dy dx and substitute the y back in. So we're going to follow these four steps in three examples for us. And the first one is I want to find the derivative of x to the x. So my very first step is I take the natural log of both sides. So I'll ln both sides of this. My next step is to now use properties of logs to move this x in front. Then my next step is to use implicit differentiation. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. When I do that on the left, I get 1 over the inside times the derivative of the inside. When I do it on the right, I get the first one times the derivative of the second plus the second one times the derivative of the first. If I want to isolate dy dx, I'm going to multiply both sides by y. And then my final step is to replace y with what it equals. Remember y was x to the x, so I can substitute that back in, and I am done. If we try it again with part b, we will first log both sides. Then we use properties of logs to move that secant down in front, because remember interior powers are the same as exterior coefficients. Then I differentiate both sides. And when I do that, on the left hand side, I will have a 1 over the inside times the derivative of the inside. And on the right, I'll need to do the product rule. So the first one times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Now after you've done this a while, you'll start to combine some of these steps. I can see right here that I need to multiply both sides by y in order to get dy dx alone. But instead of writing y and then having to write everything over again, I'm just going to replace y at the same time. So I'll have an x to the secant of x, which is the same thing as multiplying by y, times the secant of x over x plus ln of x secant of x tangent of x. With part c, we have one more of these to do, so we'll log both sides. Step 2, we will bring that 7x down in front using properties of logs. Third step, we'll differentiate both sides. Remember, we have to do product rule here, so the first one times 1 over the inside times the derivative of the inside plus the second one times the derivative of the 7x. If I isolate dy dx now, I'm going to move the y to the other side and I'm going to replace it at the same time to save myself some writing. 
simplify this. The 2's cancel, the X's cancel. I have a 7 plus a 7 log natural of 2X. With example 2, we see how logarithmic differentiation can help us even when the original function is not of that n to the n form. If we look here, we can see that we could apply the chain rule with the nested product rule and quotient rule with chain rule inside. We could use our old skills to get the derivative of this, but it would be pretty hairy and chances are good that we would get lost in the process. So instead, what we can do is apply that logarithmic differentiation and rewrite this as the log natural of y equals the log natural of all of this stuff raised to the one-third power. And we will remember that interior powers are exterior coefficients. So I could break this up and get a one-third times we can also remember that interior multiplication is exterior addition and interior division is exterior subtraction. So this 4 would come in front of a log of x minus 2 and we would add this 5 in front of a log natural x squared plus 1 and then we would subtract the log natural of the 2x minus 5. When we do this and we have split it up, it becomes much simpler to take the derivative. So the derivative of the left would be 1 over y times dy dx. And the derivative of the right, I'll move through the 1 third, then I'll move through the 4, then I'll hit the log, whose derivative is 1 over the inside times the derivative of the inside, move through the addition and the 5, hit the log, whose derivative is 1 over the inside times the derivative of the inside, move through the subtraction, hit the log whose derivative is 1 over the inside times the derivative of the inside and we're done. That was much simpler than trying to do a cube root with the power rule, then the quotient rule with some nested product rule with some more power rules and chain rule. So now if we isolate dy dx, I can just move y, which is all of this stuff, to the other side. So I'll have the cube root of this inside, which is kind of messy and long, over the 2x minus 5. And then I'm going to multiply by all of this, which is 1 third of a 4 over an x minus 2 plus a 10x over an x squared plus 1 minus a 2 over 2x minus 5. And we're done. You have some web exam problems to do now, and then I'd like you to answer the question, does a function have to be in this n to the n form for logarithmic differentiation to work? And be prepared to justify your answer in words.